I'd just like to thank you all for coming along in the five against offshore processing and mandatory detention today. My name is Max Hill, I'm from the Refugee Advocacy Group. And firstly, I'd just like to acknowledge the traditional owners of this land that we're standing on, the Wadarong tribe. As you probably all know, the ALP is planned to make amendments to the Migration Act, which means that refugee advocates all over the country need to stand up and fight for a humane approach to asylum seekers. Thanks to a government who cares more about political gain than human rights, it has become our responsibility to speak up on behalf of the voiceless asylum seekers who are constantly having their rights stripped away. The New Zealand government, much like the ALP and the Coalition, have recently run a scare campaign against boat people. Last week I was introduced to a New Zealander who told me about the government inciting xenophobia towards refugees. But there was one problem, he said. Due to New Zealand's inconvenient location on the world map, the country received virtually no refugees at all. And all this time I was thinking, hang on, this sounds a bit like our country. I mean, in Australia we, we receive an average of around 6,000 refugees a year, but this is only a tiny percentage compared to Pakistan and Syria, and even compared to our, our intake of skilled migrants. Yet we are led to believe by the press and the government that refugees are attacking our shores and taking our jobs. <laughs> While exploring asylum seekers offshore preaches the UN Refugee Convention, the Fourth Geneva Convention and the ALP Party Platform, mandatory detention must be abolished if Australia is to adopt a more humane refugee policy. Recently, an increasing amount of public attention has been focused on the injustices of mandatory detention. More and more mental health experts are starting to speak out, and the brutality that goes on in these prisons is coming to light. SOCO, the company who operates these centres, are renowned for their brutality, and at a rally at Broad Manor, I was appalled to hear about the abuse faced by the children inside the centre. In one instance, there was a boy of about eight or nine who was fleeing war in the Middle East, and he was staying in Broad Meadows while he was waiting for his application to be, uh, to be um, processed by ASIO. And he was inside the detention centre and understandably very traumatised by the experience. But on one particular day he was, he was distressed and he isolated himself from all the other children in the centre and the Serco guards and he spent most of the day in a tree. So eventually the Serco guards had to get him down. But instead of consoling him and telling him, you know, everything was going to be all right. This kid of eight or nine, he's, he's in a tree. He's been there all day. Circo guards stood under a tree, told him to jump because he was worth nothing. Shame. I think we should all give big shame to Circo right now. What do you think? Shame! I can do better than that, can't you, Mitch? I can, yes. <laughs> the average cost per detainee is over $10,000. Yet the federal government currently detains 28% of asylum seekers who are identified as genuine refugees. 28% have been identified as genuine refugees and are still in our detention centres. All these innocent refugees have had their claims approved and are still living without proper access to health care, the legal system and education. <laughs> it's plain to say that mandatory detention destroys lives, and yet the government has committed $957 million of taxpayer money to running Christmas Island over the next five years. This is just one of our many detention centres we have in this country. The average cost for detention centres in the 2010-2011 period was $772 million. To put this in perspective, our government donated $16 million to the East African famine that's going on at the moment. Shame! Sorry? Compare this $772 million to the estimated cost of a community detention which is $15.7 million for the 2010-2011 period. In community detention, asylum seekers are able to be contributing members to society and have access to things like health care, the legal system and education. Australian politicians need to shape up or ship out. I wonder how Julia would go on a leaky boat to Afghanistan. If Australia is to adopt a humane refugee policy, we need to stop offshore processing and abolish mandatory detention. We can't wait around for the left faction of the ALP to speak up the time to act is right now. Woo! Thank you all. Yeah. Now, before I go, I just want to say that we do have an amnesty petition uh, around somewhere. Under the tree. Under the tree. Um, right there, under that tree. There are some amnesty petitions against offshore processing, so we need everyone to sign this today because amnesty is doing a great job all around the country gathering petitions against this crime against humanity. So we all need you to sign this. 
and uh, Angus is going to pick it up and send it off to Parliament tomorrow. So thank you very much. Woo! Also, just one last thing. Sorry, guys. Um, I was told we are in competition with a small town called uh, Wollongong, um, who are also having a refugee rights rally today. So um, we're seeing who can have the uh, the biggest rally in a provincial town, and we need to make sure ourselves. So make as much noise as you can when you're going down the street, all right? Thank you very much. Yeah. Woo! What's that?